So let's take a look at a pretty standard sample team for red, blue, yellow OU. Okay. So first we're going to look at our Snorlax, right? Snorlax is your queen pin. If you've ever played chess, you know that you don't want to lose your queen. The same thing applies with Snorlax. I personally believe Snorlax is the best Pokemon in OU, and I can already see the haters on this comment uh, say, No! Tauros is the best! Tauros is the best Pokemon in OU! Well, guess what? We're going to disagree forever, because I think Snorlax is better than Tauros. So, what are Snorlax's selling points here? Well, Snorlax, I think his biggest selling point is he is notoriously hard to kill, right? Snorlax has uh, really bulky stats, and he has a bulky, bulky HP stat, and that makes him very hard to put down. Other positive aspects of Snorlax here is that he is a normal type, and normal types in red, blue, yellow, OU, are immune to paralysis from body slam. Any Pokemon that has a same type is immune to the secondary effects of that type of attack, with the exception of flinching. So I know flinch doesn't count for normals if you use headbutt or stomp, say, you know, and I think it might be the same for fighting as well. Because flinching isn't isn't uh, exclusively linked to a type of move, right? Right? Yeah, you can still flinch with fighting. Yes. So, normal types are extremely good in OU because they're immune to body slam. And with the Snorlax, he can eat up body slams, right? He is highly defensive. And this set right here is probably his best set, I would have to say. And not only uh, is he good for the reasons I just told you, but he's also extremely versatile. So this is obviously not the only Snorlax set. Snorlax has so many sets aside from his mainline set. You know, you have fully offensive Snorlax, you have exploding Snorlax, you have amnesia Snorlax, you know, your opponent your opponent throws in a Snorlax, there's a good chance you're not going to know what kind of Snorlax it is until he shows you. So this Snorlax set uh, Reflect and Rest are the big two moves on this set, right? So you, it's for eating body slams. And I think the reason why he's better than Tauros is that the Snorlax can defeat Tauros uh, most of the time, especially on a fresh switch in, by putting up that Reflect and just uh, outlasting Tauros with his own body slam. And I've even had games where the opponent could not manage to put me down even after I switched in a Snorlax onto their Tauros, you know? He just couldn't kill me. He couldn't roll enough crits on me. He couldn't roll a freeze, nothing. So Snorlax is not only hard to kill with physical attacks, but he's, he's also hard to kill with most special attacks in the meta. So, again, you want to keep Snorlax as long as you possibly can, preferably to the end of the game. So let's take a look at the other two moves here, Body Slam and Ice Beam. Body Slam, obviously, because it's uh, your stab special move, and it's going to punish people for switching new Pokemon in if you're just spamming Body Slam. There's a chance they're going to eat a strong Body Slam and get paralyzed uh, off of your Snorlax when they get fed up and they switch into something because they, they figured out they can't kill it. And then Ice Beam for another Snorlax exactly like this one. Or maybe they're brain dead and they're running Earthquake with this set. I wouldn't recommend it. But usually what's going to happen in OU is Snorlax is Snorlax's best counter. So you're going to have Snorlax and Snorlax on the field and it's going to become, you know, a never-ending battle of Snorlaxes. So you want to run Ice Beam on this set specifically for the opponent's other Snorlax who is probably also running Reflect. That way you can pop off a freeze on it. Okay, so let's take a look at our runner-up, our secondary contender, Tauros, who people think he is the best Pokemon in OU. And it's fair to think that, because Tauros's defining factor is that he doesn't have any good switch-ins. This is why I named him Switch Punisher, right? So why doesn't Tauros have any good switch-ins? Well, let's take a look at that big fat speed stat, baby. Uh, Tauros has a speed stat of 318. That's faster than Rapidash. That's faster than Scyther. How could they make this cow so fast? 
He is insanely fast, and um, speed in OU equates to crit rate as well. So not only is he fast, but he's also a critical hit machine. Combined with the, per the uh, paralysis effect of Body Slam, switching almost anything into Tauros is a huge, huge risk. I mean, you could eat a critical, paralyzing body slam off the switch on Tauros, right? And not only that, but Tauros also have, has coverage. So there are people who think they're cheeky in OU and they can hard switch into a cloister on Tauros because most Tauroses run a Blizzard instead of Thunderbolt. But if you put a Thunderbolt on your Tauros, he has no viable switch ins, right? I mean, there's Rhydon, but you still have Earthquake for Rhydon, and also you have a higher potential to crit Rhydon. You get two free Earthquakes on Rhydon, or no, one free Earthquake on Rhydon off, you, off a Body Slam, you know? So it's still a bad deal for the opponent. So Tauros is, is probably the most offensive Pokemon in OU, and you want to utilize that. And I always, I, I preach the mid-game pressure because he's a Switch Punisher, right? I think Snorlax would be more viable to have toward the end. Okay, so, oh yes, and of course you can run Blizzard instead of Thunderbolt, you know, or you could run Blizzard and Thunderbolt. I mean, you have options here, but uh, the most common Tauros is uh, Blizzard Tauros, which is why Cloister players feel confident, but you can always ruin their day with a Thunderbolt. Okay, so let's take the third. Take a look at the third Pokemon of the big three. These three Pokemon that I'm covering right now are the big three. That's what they're called because they're the three best Pokemon in the tier. Um, these are your S tier Pokemon, right? These these are the ones that define the meta, and they are just really really good Pokemon. And part of that reason why they're so good is because they're normal types, right? And they're they're immune to one of the, the one of the most prevalent moves in the whole game, Body Slam. So, all right, one that needs no introduction, Chansey. Everyone knows what a Chansey is. This thing is also obnoxiously hard to kill with any kind of special attacks, right? And they run Reflect, too, so they could also ruin your day for all your physical attackers as well. All right, so this this Chansey in particular is a utility Chansey, right? You could you could run uh, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Seismic Toss, Reflect on a Chansey as well, but this is the one I run most of the time because I think uh, utility Chansey is Chansey's best utility, no pun intended. So this is the Freeze Paralysis Sleep Chansey, right? We have Sing on it, we have Ice Beam on it, and we have Thunder Wave on it. This Chansey's job is to inflict status effects onto the opponent. So you're going to want to use Thunder Wave last because you don't want to start filling up status slots with Paralysis, right? You want to pop off a Sleep and a Freeze on this Chansey before you put it in later to Thunder Wave obnoxious things like Tauros or other fast Pokemon. And also, uh, you know, Chansey has soft-boiled all the time, so Chansey's going to be hard to kill for all your opponent's special attackers, all right? So that was the big three. And uh, most people run the big three in OU because why wouldn't you? Uh, they're, they're so good, okay? So now we are going to talk about the leads, the lead metagame. And uh, I think probably the most agreed-upon best lead in quotations, would be Starmie, right? But there's plenty of other leads we can use. Uh, Starmie is a very, very good Pokemon and uh, is probably the top contender. Some people uh, on Smogon and some Pokemon enthusiasts like to say that Starmie uh, constitutes a big four because Starmie is just such a common lead and Starmie is such a good Pokemon. Uh, they're, they're, trying, they're trying to push for, instead of a big three, a big four. So... You may hear some of that terminology when people talk about the big four. They're talking about the previous three plus Starmie because, you know, Starmie uh, just has such high utility as a Pokemon in general. Okay, so why does Starmie have such high utility? Well, a big defining factor of what makes a Pokemon good in OU is whether or not it can heal itself. So Starmie has that covered, and a lot of the best Pokemon in the tier can heal themselves quite reliably. And uh, that's one of Starmie's things. But when we're using Starmie as a lead, it also has a whole lot of utility. So I named it Bait Lead, and that's precisely what it does. 
is you want Starmy to go to sleep. You want Starmy to go to sleep. Why do you want Starmy to go to sleep? Because Starmy has great defensive typing, uh, and Starmy also has a good speed stat. So Starmy's typing is water and psychic, which makes it resistant to two of the most common attacks in OU, which is ice and psychic attacks. So this Starmie can eat ice attacks and it can eat psychic attacks. Combined with its high speed stat, it means it can sleep faster than most of the uh, opponent's Pokemon, right? So this Starmie basically has the highest chance of waking up compared to every other Pokemon in the tier, which is why people put it out first, is because of its uh, speed and resistance. Right, so this the Starmie can be put to sleep, and then has has the highest chance of waking up later in the match, given your opponent's move sets. You know, aside from Thunderbolt or maybe Mega Drain or Razor Leaf, which aren't too which aren't as common as Thunderbolt. So that's what makes Starmie a really good lead. Uh, we can discuss other leads in another video, but um, I just wanted to, to tell you why people lead Starmie all the time. Okay, so let's take a look at. Uh, this move set here, and I don't know if you know this, but Starmie has a very diverse move pool, making another great candidate for a top Pokemon. I mean, you can you can run electric type attacks on this water type Pokemon, and that's not too common in OU. You know, you have uh, you could run. Look at all these elemental attacks here. I mean, you have options, right? So let's take a look at this set in particular. Why did I pick these options? Well. Thunder Wave is always good to have. You always want that option, especially if you're a faster Pokemon. You want the option to paralyze the opponent. Recover, obviously. Big, obvious. Uh, you want to be able to heal yourself. One of the best moves. Psychic Blizzard. So you usually have two more move slots on Starmie. And I think these two moves are probably the best ones you can use as a lead, at least. Right? Okay, so... Why Psychic Blizzard? Um, if you're using Starmie as a lead, there's a high probability that if you're in kind of the low, mid, normally ranks, your opponent is going to throw in a Chansey on turn one because they think you're going to Thunder Wave, right? Well, no, don't Thunder Wave. Uh, you can use Psychic or Blizzard depending on what your opponent's lead is. And on that Chansey switch in, you're either going to get a special drop or a 10% chance to freeze, right? So if your opponent throws in a Chansey... They, they, they want to eat your Thunderbolt, and they also have a plan for your Starmie. They're either running uh, Thunder Wave, sorry. They're either running Thunderbolt or they're running Sing. And it might be tempting to switch out your Starmie against a Chansey, but if you're running it as a lead, don't. Don't do it, because the risk of your opponent having Sing on their Chansey is going to be too high, and you want Starmie to go to sleep. And uh, the odds of your opponent running Thunderbolt and Sing are very, very low. It's just not something that happens in OU because it's really impractical, and it makes Chansey really impractical against Rhydons. So if, if they have Thunderbolt, there's a high chance they don't have Sing, and if they have Sing, there's a high chance they don't have Thunderbolt. I mean, really high. I've never seen it. <clears throat> so your opponent throws in Chansey. You didn't paralyze the Chansey, which is really, really good for you because you want to save something, a better status effect for that Chansey later on because Chansey is a good Pokemon and is very obnoxious for you. So hopefully your opponent will get desperate when you keep blizzarding them or psychicking their Chansey, and they're either going to want to put your Starmie to sleep or switch out, which are both good uh, opportunities for you. So that's why I run Psychic and Blizzard on my Starmie. Okay. And let, let's take a look at the last two Pokemon here. The last two Pokemon are usually, uh, uh, it's called Player's Choice. That's what they call it on the forums, is uh, the end of the formula is Player's Choice, right? You have your big three, your lead, and your two Player's Choice Pokemon, which are also usually pretty high tier OU Pokemon. Um, these are included in that description. But why did I pick these two, right? Well, I have my own little formula I like to use when I'm team building in OU. So for my fourth Pokemon, I went with Starmie, and Starmie as my lead. So these two are my Starmie support, right? So let's take a good hard look at these two Pokemon. I have Starmie Helper 1, Starmie Helper 2. Why did I pick these two? Well, because Starmie is vulnerable to thunder. Starmie is uh, vulnerable to electric. And so 
the first thing I wanted to do is cover uh, my choices weaknesses with with my remaining choices. So I picked right on to eat thunder type attacks, and additionally, right on has uh, the highest one click attack in the game, uh, earthquake, with his massive massive attack stat. Right, and we'll talk about the move sets in a minute here, and then Zapdos. Think about it. What's Starmie's other weaknesses? Grass, right? And Zapdos is a flying type. Therefore, if your opponent is running the Victory Bell, which most people, I mean, people at higher levels will, will run Victory Bell for the element of surprise, right? Victory Bell isn't a bad OU Pokemon. It's it's quite good with its wrap. But anyway, we're not talking about Victory Bell. We're talking about Zapdos. And Zapdos can, uh, can eat the Razor Leaf, and it can also eat Mega Drain. But let's take let's talk a little bit more about Zapdos really quick. Um, you really, really never, ever want your opponent to know that you have an electric type. Never ever. So Zapdos is our end game Pokemon, right? Because your opponent could have a freaking Rhydon waiting for you. In fact, both of these Pokemon are pretty end game Pokemon. Not pretty, they are end game Pokemon. And Zapdos most definitely is your end end game Pokemon because you never want to show your electric to your opponent because they love to see it. They love to see it, especially if they're running right on, which is a common thing to run in OU. And if they know that you have an electric, they are going to, you, you bet your ass, they are going to save that right on for dead last to make sure that you have the lowest chance of deploying that Zapdos on them, right? So that is just something I do uh, when it comes to building my remaining three is I think about uh, the weaknesses of the Pokemon I've chosen. It doesn't necessarily have to be a lead, you know, there, there's some interchangeability you can use. But um, I think about uh, one of one Pokemon's weaknesses, and I try to pick some meta Pokemon that will cover those weaknesses. And Zapdos is a really good Pokemon in OU, and I'll explain why later. So let's circle back to the front here. And I do want to note that these Pokemon are organized in uh, where they belong in their lineup, right? So they're from left to right uh, at what point of the game you should probably be using these Pokemon. And uh, Snorlax is so good that it can usually be used mid-game and then save for end game, right? You can put Snorlax back away after, you know, you heal it. So Snorlax is... Similar to how you would use a queen in chess, you know, you you want to take an in and out approach to it. Okay, anyway, circling back. Let's take a look at Starmie and Chansey here. These two form a couplet, and it's something you always want in every single one of your OU teams. Uh, why these two are very important to keep alive is that they can heal themselves and they can eat psychics extremely well. And you really, you really have to be using this in OU. You have to be using this technique or you're going to get destroyed uh, as you get higher in the ranks. Um, this technique is called shuffling. So your opponent is going to probably at some point in the match spam psychics at you. And when they're spamming psychics, you're going to get special drops. And you can completely negate this strategy by having two either Psychic Healing Pokemon or a Psychic Healing Pokemon and Chansey, right? You want two Psychic Eaters that can heal themselves because you can shuffle them in and out and constantly reset your special stat, completely negating your opponent's onslaught of Psychic. So you want you always want your two shufflers here, and that's what these are, is, is my two shufflers. It doesn't always have to be Starmie and Chansey. It usually is Chansey and another Psychic-type Pokemon. And if you want to get a little crazy, you should at least run two Psychic-type Pokemon that can heal themselves so you can shuffle. If you can't shuffle, there's a high probability that you're going to lose the higher you get in the ranks. Okay, so let's circle back to our endgamers here. All right, endgame Rhydon. Why do you want to keep Rhydon for the endgame in particular? Well, Rhydon is very, very vulnerable to special attacks. Rhydon is vulnerable to ice, in particular in OU, and there's a lot of ice-type attacks. And as you get toward the end of the game, you have a better idea of the Pokemon that your opponent has, the moves they have, and there's probably a higher probability of ice-type moves being eliminated from your opponent's roster toward the end of the game, which is where Rhydon can really shine when its barriers have been removed 
particularly special types and ice types. Um, Rhydon has uh, extremely high attack, and this can be leveraged heavily to kill a Chansey at the end of the game. If you haven't managed to sleep or freeze the opponent's Chansey, and you paralyzed it instead, Rhydon can kill it. Rhydon can kill the opponent's Chansey. I mean, his attack is ridiculous. So the Chansey is not going to be able to Ice Beam you before you kill it with Earthquake. They would need a lucky crit to do so. And Rhydon also, you don't, there's not as much pressure to hide Rhydon as there is Zapdos. So if you're facing an ugly Thunder Wave or you're facing a kill shot from Thunderbolt on your Starmie, you can shuffle the Rhydon in, pop off a Body Slam on your opponent's switch, and then switch him back out, right? You're using Rhydon as a lightning rod, you know, to protect yourself. But you don't want to keep that Rhydon in too early because you want to save it for the end. You don't want your Rhydon to die. And also, you don't have to use Rhydon, but I'm just explaining these two uh, Pokemon that I picked at the end. Okay, so this 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 set, Body Slam, Earthquake, Rock Slide, Substitute. You got your two stab attacks, Earthquake and Rock Slide, and Substitute. This is going to help you in the end game when you know the, the uh, Pokemon that your opponent has. So if you know what they can potentially switch in, and there's a chance that you can kill the opponent's Pokemon... Uh, after they break your substitute, then do it. You want to set up that substitute. But if you don't know what they have, and you don't know if you're going to be able to efficiently use your attacks in time, don't set up the substitute. So substitute's going to help you if you know what your opponent has, and can potentially buy your ride on uh, a little bit more time to get the kill. Okay, Zapdos. Again, I will scream it to the heavens. Don't put in your freaking Zapdos if you don't absolutely have to. I mean, you really, really want to keep your electric type uh, private from your opponent. And Zapdos can wreak absolute havoc on an opponent at the end of the game. Why is that? Two words for you. Drill Peck, the only viable flying type attack in the OU meta is Drill Peck, right? What does Drill Peck hurt? In, in our lineup, right? It's it can it can destroy Executor, it can destroy Chansey. Like if you if you have a if your opponent's Chansey is paralyzed at the end of the game, not only can you kill it with Rhydon, you can kill it by spamming Drill Peck at it, right? You can you can kill Alakazam by spamming Drill Peck at it. Uh, Zapdos has a decently high crit rate as well, right? And of course, the prevalence of water types in OU, your opponent you know, they might be feeling pretty cocky because they have a Cloyster or they have a Starmie that they've been kicking your ass with all game. Surprise, end of the game. I had this in my back pocket the whole time. It's sweeping time. You're you're dead to rights now because I was hiding a Zapdos the whole time. So Zapdos has very good stats. I mean, look at these stats. I mean, they're all pretty well-rounded at the high end, and he has the uh, highest electric-type special attack in the whole game. So, I mean, Zapdos is a very, very strong Mon, very good typing, uh, flying, of course, so you can't be hit by those ground-type ground attacks. So, very good mon, mon to keep in the pocket toward the end of the game. And let's take a look at the set really quick. We have Agility, right? So, you can break out of your paralysis with this, and you ideally don't... Here, here's an Agility tip for you for all Agility users. Try not to use agility if your opponent has also has agility and you are paralyzed, right? If you're paralyzed and you're trying to break out of the paralysis, don't use it. Don't use agility too early if your opponent has another uh, stat changing move because their stat changing move is going to reset your stats, right? So uh, the stats are a little freaking broken in their calculations for Gen One, and every time you do a stat change. And then another stat change happens, like from your opponent, your stats are going to be uh, reset back to what they were. So if there's a chance that you can get special drop from a psychic, or there's a chance your opponent can use an agility or maybe a sword stance, don't use agility too early to break the paralysis. Also, you can set up this Zapdos if your opponent has unparalyzed fast Pokemon like Tauros, Alakazam, Starmie, and you want to dodge the Thunderbolt or the Blizzard, uh, set up your agility first if, there, if you can, and boom, you can now outspeed all these other Pokemon. All right? 
drill pick. Again, great physical attack, right? Not not too not it's better it's it has better attack, better attacking moves than Jolteon, barring double kick on Chansey. But drill pick is, you know, I mean, this this is probably one of the few electrics in the game that has a viable uh, attacking strategy. Thunderbolt, duh. Thunder Wave, of course, because who, who doesn't like Thunder Wave? Thunder Wave is always a good thing to have, right? Okay. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, breakdown of this uh, sample team, and I hope it maybe gave you a good understanding of the kind of formula team building that you're going to see in the OU bracket. And I believe for my next video, we're going to play a quick game with this team and kind of analyze what we talked about here.